All right, here we are. All kinds of shit going on today. Um, but we have our regular programming, so I hope people are watching me instead of watching all this shit happening in the Middle East. Um, yeah, we're living in some really, really interesting and dangerous times right now. And I don't know if you guys have seen it, but Iran just bombed the fuck out of Israel. Launched enough shit at them that their Iron Dome kind of failed. Lots of stuff got through. And now everybody's talking about us getting dragged into their bullshit war. I don't know how you feel about it. This may be a political hot button for some people that drives you away from our page. But, you know, my views are my views. And maybe we don't always align on everything. But I think we can align on this anti-CPS stuff even if our political views and views of the war and all that stuff uh, don't align. But my view on Iran, I'll just say it, is we should not be getting involved in that shit in Israel. Israel's making its own bed in the Middle East. We're funding it for sure. We're giving them weapons for sure. We're giving them logistical support, I'm sure. But um, we should go no further. I do not support sending our sons and daughters over to the Middle East for any reason. And to the extent that we're already over there in some regard, I think we ought to pull it all out and shut it down. We, we just don't belong there. That is the business of America is business, not war. And, um, you know, we need to stop this shit. That's, that's my view. We just need to stop this shit. The world's problems are not our problems. I look out my window and, you know, those things, those things I see in my front yard, those things I see on my way to work, the homelessness, the, the border, the, the things that impact me directly, those are our business. Those, those things are where we should be and need to be devoting our time, energy, and resources. We don't need to be off fighting some fucking war in Ukraine or Iran or Israel some shit like that. We just need to get out of this crap and focus on our own house first. That's my view. That's my soapbox. I'm done. Let's get on with tonight's video. I suggest everybody buy gold if you can. The world is going to shit. And um, I don't know, man. If you have kids, maybe if they're draft age, export them to Mexico. Get them the fuck out of here because your government's probably coming for them. Who knows? Anyway, hello and happy Saturday with all of that as a preface. Tonight's going to be volume one, part one of the deposition of who? It's going to be the dep deposition of Merrick Cruz Perez, the detective who made the idiotic, idiotic decision to seize Rachel Bruno's kids without a warrant, emergency, or anything else. And I can tell you they paid dearly for it. They paid money. Significant money. So, you know, fuck them. Ah, note from James. Let's get on to that. PayPal. PayPal donations. That keeps everything moving. There's the link. Do what you can to help. All the money right now that we receive from any of this stuff is being poured into our little AI project. And it's my understanding James does have a big body of law um, fine-tuned on a by Cunha 13B model. And I think that it's either up and available or going to be up and available. And uh, yeah, Lawrence, I hope that he doesn't get sent over there, man. I mean, uh, my soon to be son-in-laws in the Navy is a helicopter pilot. Luckily he just got transferred to a space systems division. So that's basically a desk job. But the way I see it, we're going to get drug into this shit. We have all these war hawks in Washington just chomping at the bit to send our sons and daughters overseas to die. And um, I don't know. I just I just hope we don't end up where I think we're going to end up. This is uh, doesn't matter where he is, man. If, if they need a body, they'll suck him in. So And then who knows? I mean, maybe China takes this moment of you know, multi-front weakness. I mean, we can't support a fight against the whole world. Everybody knows that. We're already, what, 30-something, 30 33 trillion in debt. How are we going to finance a freaking world war? If I were China, I would wait until we were deeply embroiled with the Middle East, and then 
I'd do whatever I wanted over there. And all of a sudden, your son in Japan is right in the middle of it. I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer with this, but I'm actually very, very annoyed that this is happening. Anyway, uh, Patreon. For those of you who are litigating your cases pro se, can't find attorneys, things like that, Patreon's a great resource. We publish all our work product there. Um, it's good. It's a good guide. Lots of good templates. If you look at the material, how we put things together, it's, it's a really good way to learn how to litigate your case. Yeah, I know it's all by design, these fuckers, and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. E even your vote doesn't really count. So, I mean, it's a problem for the masses. They, they let us vote so that we feel better about it. But do we really have a say? Does it really matter? I don't know. They're doing this shit anyway. So, and I saw they just, uh, Mike Johnson fucker, just pushed through a reapproval of FISA. So, I mean, what do you do with that? You got the government. They're probably snooping on us right here, right now. And um, yeah, that's something interesting. I had on my LinkedIn profile, I got a uh, searches from the Department of Justice, the uh, Secret Service, and the Secretary of State. It's like, what the fuck, people? Why are they searching my LinkedIn? It's like, give me a break, man. Anyway, back to our our task ahead of us tonight, and that's Mary Cruz Perez. Remember, if you have any questions as we're working through tonight's stream or any other stream for that matter, please do send them into capsandstemslaw at gmail.com. That's C-A-P-S-A-N-D-S-T-E-M-S-L-A-W at gmail.com. And we will try to respond to your questions during the live streams during the week. For Patreon subscribers, that's an added benefit is that uh, your questions, if you put them in the messages tab, in patreon it sends me an email notification and i'll get back to you as quickly as i possibly can now for the next month or so i've got a deposition scheduled every freaking day for the entire month of may and most of the rest of the month of april so it may be hard for me to respond to anybody frankly lawrence thanks a lot man five bucks everything helps so much super sticker nice very much appreciated That'll make James happy. Going to lay in some more cards once we get uh, enough money. We're going to see if we can't buy, um, God, what version? What What is it? It's the 4090s, I think, the NVIDIA 4090s. The more of those that we're able to lay into our system, obviously the faster it trains, better it trains, all that stuff. It chews up a lot of electricity, but uh, I've got solar power, so, you know. It just eats up some of our back feed, which is okay. I'd rather use it for our stuff than give it back to the power company at, you know, less than wholesale prices. That's another thing where they fuck you. But, um, yeah, you know, it's all stacked against us. It's kind of sad. Anyway, I, enough of that. Enough of that. I don't want to bring everybody down on a Saturday evening. It's a great day. Anyway, Mary Cruz Perez, Volume 1, Part 1, 30 minutes long. I will send out the Patreon link, James. And uh, I will try to insinuate myself into each clip in order to keep the audience engaged. That's what he's telling me, keep the audience engaged. Well, here we go. Yeah, that's all right. Good morning. We are on the record. This is the digital video deposition of Mara Cruz Perez testifying in the matter of Bruno et al. versus County of Los Angeles et al. <clears throat> Case number 817CB01301, CJCJDE. Today we are located at 555 Anton Boulevard, Suite 1200, Costa Mesa, California. Today's date is September 5th, 2018. Time on the video monitor is 10.05 a.m. My name is John Immel, I'm the video specialist with Jordan Media Inc. The certified shorthand reporter today is Michelle Hutton in association with Concord <clears throat> Reporting. Will counsel please introduce yourselves for the record? Sean McMillan appearing on behalf of all plaintiffs. Mark McGrath on behalf of Children's Hospital of Orange County. Jeannie Tosman on behalf of Defendants County of Orange, Nicole Stratman and Laura Todd. Chelsea Desmond on behalf of Defendants. Christy Swiss, Collins, Collins, Muir, and Stewart, on behalf of Defendant County of Los Angeles, 
Detective Mary Cruz Perez, who is present in the witness today, Detective Bellin Lemus, Deputy Jason Schmoker, and Deputy John Lee. The reporter may swear in the witness. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly state that the testimony you will give in this deposition will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Good morning, ma'am. How are you this morning? Good morning. Fine. Good. Thanks for coming down today. Before we get started in earnest, if I could get you to state and spell your full name. It's Maricruz Perez. M-A-R-I-C-R-U-Z. P-E-R-E-Z. Any middle initial, middle name? Okay. One thing that you'll have to try to do today, and I know it's a little bit stilted and unnatural, um, and I sometimes do get, tend to get a little conversational, but because we have a court reporter uh, trying to write down everything we say, I'll try to wait till you're finished, but you also have to wait until my question's out completely. And sometimes that's hard to tell because I kind of will stop in the middle and think about it and stuff like that. But if you can kind of pause in between and I'll extend you the same courtesy or at least try to, it'll make it a lot easier for her to do her job. We have video too, so I mean, if worse comes to worse, we've got that. But the official record is the written one. Okay? Okay. Okay. So what do you currently do? Uh, I'm a detective. With? The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. How long have you been there? Uh, with the department? Yes. Or over 22 years. How long have you been a detective? Uh, I believe I'm going on 13. Wow, that's a long time. Yes. Used to be, um, I didn't stick with anything longer than 15 years. I just kind of cycle through different, I've been through three or four different careers. Right. And some, some overlapping, but uh, law is the longest one I've done so far. I think about, maybe it's too long. <laughs> anyway, that's my story, not yours. So 13 years, that would have been then in 2005-ish that you became a detective? Yes, I believe it was in 2005. What was the process that you went through to become a detective? <clears throat> well, the first, well, I was a station detective initially. When was that? In 2005. Okay. How long were you a station detective? I believe that was about a year and three months. What is a station detective? Um, same thing as a detective, but we handle various or investigate various types of crimes, so not just one specific crime. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, it's more of like a generalist. Correct. Okay. Is that when you're when you say various types of crimes that include both felonies and misdemeanors? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and then what did you do? What was the next step after that one year and three months as a station detective? Uh, from there, then I went to uh, Special Victims Bureau. Okay, and what's that? Uh, that's a particular, a specialized unit within our department. And what's the specialization? Uh, we handle specific crimes. Well, okay. What sorts of specific crimes? You're going to make me work today, aren't you? <laughs> uh, we handle um, physical abuse of children, sexual abuse of children, and we also handle um, adult sexual assaults. <clears throat> Okay, so it's basically all in one form or another, some kind of physical abuse, whether it's on children or adults. No, we don't handle physical abuse of adults. Okay, only sexual or sexual sexual assault, so like rape or attempted rape, rape things exactly. like that. Exactly. Okay. And did you have a particular assignment there? Were you assigned to a particular um, subset of those three areas, or was it just any of the three? It could be any of the three. Okay. 
And that's what you've done since like mid-2006? No. Okay. When did you start with the Special Victims Bureau? Well, I started there in 2006, but um, we were not investigating. That unit was not investigating um, adult sexual crimes at that time. Okay. That's something that came about later? Exactly. But within the same unit? You didn't transfer out to a different? No, okay. no, no, same unit. Okay. At what point in time did you also pick up um, or that unit also pick up the adult sexual abuse? Oh my goodness. Um, so I'm going to make you work too. I know, huh? um, let's see. Gosh, if I had, had to estimate. Um, yeah, an estimate's fine. Uh, Maybe three years. We, so, we took over, maybe. It's like 2009-ish. No, we're in 2018. Oh, you mean three years ago? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so like 2015. I think I'm not sure. Okay, and that that sort of raises an a important point. Anytime today, I'm going to be asking you about stuff that happened some time ago, and when we get into training and policies, stuff like that, it could be things that happened a long time ago. Right. So. You don't have to give me, in fact, I, I don't expect you to be able to give me exact dates or times or you know, numbers, things mm -hmm. like that. But I am entitled to your best estimate. So if you can estimate, you know, give me your estimate. If you really, truly can't even give me an estimate, tell me that. Okay. So am I correct then that from 2006 to present, you've been with the Special Victims Bureau and you've been charged with the duty to investigate allegations of physical abuse on children, sexual abuse on children. Well, that, anyway, those two subcategories, it's correct, you've been doing that since 2006, right? Correct. Okay. And only recently have you added on responsibilities for investigating adult um, sexual assaults. Correct. Okay. Now, was there any specific training that you had or that you had to undergo to become a detective? Well, we did have, um, when I initially became a, a station detective, mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, we went, they sent us to, um, I believe it was a week long, a 40 hour course, and that was for criminal investigations. Do you remember what that uh, course was called? I think it was called criminal investigations. That makes sense. Yeah. You said that was a 40 hour course? Yes. Were there written materials that accompanied that course? <clears throat> Let me back I'm, up a second. I'm assuming you said it was a week long. Mm -hmm. Did you have like a different well, hold on. Was that a week of formal, like, classroom instruction? Yes. Okay. Did you have a different instructor that came in each day or, or for each section of the course? I don't remember if it was different instructors with every course, or um, it could have been one instructor handling three or two different, I, I don't remember. And what was the format? Was it lecture format, or did they accompany with a PowerPoint? Were there written materials? Do you remember? I believe there might have been some handout. Okay. Um, of course, lecture. I don't remember if they had PowerPoint during that time. Okay. Yeah, it was back in 2005, so they may not have. Yeah. That's sort of a more recent development. <clears throat> During any portion of that uh, coursework, do you recall learning anything about legal restrictions that may apply to your conduct in the investigations, in your investigations of crimes? 
apply legal conduct? Legal restrictions that might apply to the way you conduct your investigation. I don't remember exactly. Um, I don't remember. Let me ask it this way. Maybe maybe it'll help you out a little bit. Did you learn anything in that 40 hours of coursework relative to how the 4th or 14th Amendments to the United States Constitution might apply in some way to the work that you would be doing? I do remember, I'm not sure if that was separate or within those 40 hours, because I think I also remember taking, at some point, uh, no, I think it might have been within that 40 hours. Um, in regards to um, um, searches and seizures. Let's go back a little bit further. I don't know how the sheriffs do it. Do you guys go through some sort of post training or something like that or before you actually <coughs> become a deputy? Yes. Okay. And what's, is it post training? Yes. Okay. <coughs> And you recall through your post-training, well, let me ask this first. How many course hours of post-training did you endure? Well, I don't know how many post hours, but our academy at that time frame, um, I believe, was about six months. Six months. Now, you, you study a lot of stuff at the academy besides um, well, do you recall during your academy training, or any training that you had before you became a detective actually, other than the 40 hours you've already talked to me about, do you recall learning anything relative to how the 4th and 14th amendments might impact the work that you would be doing as a law enforcement officer? I believe that they did cover in one of the learning domains during our uh, post in regards to obviously illegal uh, searches and seizures. I believe there was a learning domain regarding that. Okay. What do you recall about the restrictions imposed on you by the 4th and 14th Amendments? Objection vague, overbroad, <clears throat> calls for a narrative. You can answer. Did you understand the question? If you didn't understand the question, we can fix it, but if you no, didn't. No, no, go ahead and repeat that, please. Yeah, sure. Can I have the question reread, please? What do you recall about the restrictions imposed on you by the 4th and 14th Amendments? In regards to that time frame of what I learned sure. during that, oh gosh. At that time frame, I don't remember specifically in 1996 it would have been. Okay. What's your understanding now sitting here today? My understanding is everybody has rights, equal rights. Um, obviously I can't just go into somebody's home um, and just take any evidence um, and Obviously, there's a way to legally obtain evidence. What is that? What do you mean when you say there's a way to legally obtain evidence? Well, there's different ways that we can obtain um, evidence in a case. Okay. And one of the things, obviously, that we learned is, you know, consent. Mm -hmm. Um, getting a warrant or um, exigent circumstances. I'm sorry? Exigent circumstances. Okay, let's talk about consent for a moment. What do you mean when you say consent? Consent is when I ask somebody if if I can have something, or if I can do something, mm -hmm. get, getting their permission. Permission. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that permission, though, it has to be giving 
um, it has to be a knowing, intelligent, and voluntary giving of permission, right? Of course, and I can't threaten somebody. Right. <clears throat> Then exigent circumstances, what's your understanding of what that means? Exigent circumstances, um, that would mean um, something that is life threatening. Or in this case, sometimes, you know, destruction of evidence. Participation of evidence. That would work too. Anticipation of evidence? Anticipation. Like somebody, you hear a bathroom, run to the bathroom, you hear the toilet flushing, they're getting rid of evidence, you can bust in the door and grab it, right? Well, if there's other information, not just right. that. <laughs> right. When you say life threatening, um, what do you mean? What are you referring to? Somebody's life is at stake, or um, it could be safety. Um, it could be somebody who is in regards to like maybe somebody's, there can be, I guess, severe physical harm. Not just, well, yeah. So something life-threatening or where the person may suffer severe bodily Body injury. injury. Is there a temporal element to that though? It's not just the danger. Is, is there a time limitation, according to your training? Well, there is in regards to whether we would need to get a search warrant. What's that time limitation? There's not an exact time frame. Mm -hmm. like we can't set four hours, seven hours, ten hours. But when we're talking about exigent circumstances, aren't we talking about something that's immediate in nature? That, that's why you can't get a warrant. You don't have time to get a warrant. Uh, yes, it'd be immediate. Well, yes, immediate. And in fact, it's required by law that it be an immediate danger of some right. kind. Right? Right. Okay. Like the ax is falling, you've got to do something now to prevent whatever that bad thing is. Right. Now you've talked with me these three things, the consent, the warrant, the exigent circumstances, and it sounded mostly like it was in relation to obtaining evidence, right? Searching, searches. That we just talked about? Yeah. or that we just talked about. Uh, well, one of the things that we brought up was the uh, destruction of evidence. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to exigency, I mean, as far as, you know, somebody's life being a threat, mm -hmm. It does, I'm not referring to just evidence. I'm talking about somebody's life. Yeah, you're talking about intervening in some way to prevent that immediate danger. Correct. Okay. Have you ever actually gone out and sought a warrant? I've received, yes, I have, I have had a warrant. How long does that typically take? Well, that all depends on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, who I have to interview. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't put a specific time frame. Let's do it this way. Let's say, just for this example, you've interviewed whoever it is you think you have to interview. Okay. Okay. And you want to get a warrant. What's the process? Obviously the investigation, mm -hmm. the talking to the people. Preparing the warrant, obtaining the judge's approval, and then executing the warrant. Okay, you've already done your investigation, so we're just talking about preparing the application and obtaining a judge's approval. Let's just stick to those two components. Okay. How long does that take on average? And you can give me an estimate on this one. I'm sorry, once I've already... Yeah, you've done your investigation. Okay. Now you have to prepare an application, right? right? And that includes swearing out an affidavit. Right. Right. You sign that under penalty of perjury. Right. Okay, then you submit that to a judge. Correct. Okay, and it takes the judge some time to read it and review it, and the judge may have some questions of you. Correct. Okay, how long does that process take on average? 
so basically just the presenting mm -hmm. of the warrant to a judge? Well, that would depend time of day. That would depend. Let's assume it's at night. Okay, after hours. Yeah, sure. So I would have to get a hold of the DA command post. Okay. That's and a phone call, right? That is a phone call. Okay. Um, let's see. I guess it would depend on how long it would take the judge to to respond to me. Have you done one of these things after hours before in your entire career? No. You've never done an after hours warrant? No. Okay. What about during regular business hours? Have you sought a warrant during regular business hours? Yes. Okay. How long did that take? The preparation and obtaining approval? I would say maybe a couple hours, the driving. Like two to three? Depending on where I was coming from. Yeah, and then obviously <clears throat> if the on-duty judge, if he's hearing cases or... If they typically available. interrupt though if they're hearing cases and a warrant request comes in, right? Um, it depends on the judge mm -hmm. and it depends on what type of case they're hearing at that time. Okay. So obviously if they're hearing it, some type of jury trial, it might take a, a little break before they see me, or sometimes they have looked at it as they're on the bench. Right. And that way they can take the next break and then either grant or deny your request. Correct. Okay. So that process, how long does that typically on average take? Is that the two to three hours, roughly? Yes. Okay. Do you know what a, a temporary protective order is? Yes. Okay. What is that? Um, that is just basically, um, well, it's a protective order, similar to where I can call a judge mm -hmm. uh, on an emergency basis mm -hmm. um, and get a uh, protective order uh, or a temporary protective order, and I believe it's usually good for five business days, mm -hmm. and that's typically done over the phone. How long does that typically take? Um, well, in order for me to gather the information to prepare a protective order. Um, I guess that would depend on the actual uh, interviews, so I couldn't say. Let, let, let me ask you this way, because I'm, I'm sort of curious about that process. So just sure. take me through it step by step. You're out in the field, you've done an investigation, you think you might need a, pr a temporary protective order. Sure. What are the steps that I would go through as one of your deputies? What, what are the steps I would go through to get that order? as incomplete hypothetical vague as to as one of your deputies okay. you understand the question you can answer. let's just let's just assume I'm you what are the steps that I'm going to go through to get that protective order well you have to hear well you have to interview the parties that are involved do you have to do that personally or can you just ask somebody else what they got in their interview in order for me to obtain a protective order? Yeah. You mean me getting statements from another deputy? Yeah, that's a good that, example. I'm, I'm that's a good curious. example. Let's let's say, uh, yeah. Can can you just rely on what another deputy tells you, or do you have to do those interviews yourself? I would say I could rely on my partners to get that information. And then once you get that information, mm -hmm. what's the, whether it's you interviewing yourself or you relying on another deputy telling you what they heard, what's the next step in the process? Well, it all depends if, I mean, if it's, I gotta make sure it's the victim who wants the protective order. Okay. If, they're, we'll, if they're the one that's requesting it. Okay, what if, what if they're not? Well, then I, we don't get a restraining order, a okay. protective order. Can you get warrants by telephone? You mean sign it, have it signed off? Yeah, can you call in, request a warrant, and then follow up later with your written affidavit? 
Yeah, we can, we can do it over the phone. Okay, so you can do the warrant process in a similar manner as you can do a, the process for a temporary protective order. Yes. And call in, get a judge, say, hey, this is what I've got. These are the circumstances. These are the circumstances. The judge will then issue the order over the telephone, right? Right, and swear you in. And swear you in over the telephone. Mm -hmm. And then later you'll send in the paperwork. Is that right? Correct. Okay. How long does that process take? That's what I'm really looking for is when you're out in the field, you do a telephone warrant, how long does that whole process take to get that order? Are you referring just to in, in getting the actual, just getting it signed off by the judge? Or yeah. are you referring to the actual investigation? Well, let's just assume the investigations, it, it's the same circumstance when you call in the warrant, right? You can rely on what another deputy tells you, correct? Right. Okay, so then you can get on the phone, call the judge and say, so-and-so did the investigation, they told me X, Y, Z, can you issue me a warrant? Something like that, right? right? Then the judge will swear you in and either grant or deny your warrant request over the telephone. Correct. Okay, how long, once you've got the in investigation part done from the other deputy, how long is it gonna take you to get that telephone warrant, that telephone authorization? <clears throat> Again, I guess it would depend when you call, if it's after hours, during hours. Mm -hmm. Just in your hours. experience, based on your training and your own experience, how long does that typically take? Does the judge put you on hold for two or three hours? Well, I've never done one over the phone. You've so. never done it over the phone in your entire career? No. In your training, do they cover that subject with you, getting telephone warrants? Yes, different ways, yes. Okay, and in your training, what do they tell you is the typical time that it takes to get one of those? I don't recall them ever indicating the time frame it takes. Okay. Do you know any, who would you ask if you were back at the office right now and you wanted to know like, what's the process? How long would it take me to get one of these telephone warrants? Who would you talk to? Well, I might talk to one of my partners. Which one? Well, he's no longer there, but I'd probably call him. What's his name? Um, Detective Jaime. How do you spell that? J-A-I-M-E. Is that first or last name? Uh, that's a last name. Okay. Do you know if he's still employed by the Sheriff's Department or is he retired? Oh, no, he's still employed. He's still and he's with County Los Angeles? Correct. Do you know what, uh, what do you call it, like unit, branch? I don't know what you guys call it when you like move around from one place to another. Is it a different unit? Is it a different branch? What is it? He's at a different unit. Different unit. What unit is he at? He's at the Homicide Bureau. Is there anybody else in your unit who you might go to to ask how long it's going to take you to get a telephone warrant? I'd probably go to another partner. Name. Um, First one that uh, you would feel most confident and would know the answer to your question. I would say Detective Walatis. Can you spell it? W-A-L-A-D-I-S. And is he still with you in your unit? Correct. Okay. <clears throat>
And, oh, James is going to be pissed. I didn't share the Caps and Stems Patreon link. Damn, I meant to do that, but I just forgot. So here, I'll do it right now. Um, remember, it's a good resource, man, whether you're an attorney getting into the area of law or a pro se plaintiff. There, are, is a, there is a ton of stuff up there, and it's very well worth it. Yeah, Steve, you do need to watch it because I didn't give you the uh, details. If you want the details, you got to watch, man. Uh, Goddess of Kratos, cool song. That was actually pretty well done. Very much appreciated. Very cute. Tomorrow will be Marie Cruz Perez Volume 1 Part 2. Remember, if you have questions, email them in to capsandstemslaw at gmail.com. Again, that is capsandstemslaw at gmail.com. I'll push it right up there. There you can see it right there in the corner. Uh, we'll answer questions periodically throughout the week, although it may be rough. I don't know how many sessions I'm going to be on next week as we work our way through Detective Cruz because I just got depositions up the wazoo, which is good for you guys because there's a lot of new material coming out of this stuff. Um, but anyway, just a reminder, if you look right below the video, there's a video description. If you click or tap show more, there are tons of links to catch up on, review past videos, as well as the Patreon link. If you guys are enjoying the content, please show your support by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. We really do hope the content helps you navigate through whatever challenges you're facing. I mean, that's the whole reason we're doing this. Heather Bostic, quick answer to your question, says, how often does CPS get denied a protective order? I think almost never. I'm pretty sure that if they make the application, it gets granted. So anyway... All it does is sort of put some brakes or a little a, a little roadblock, a little bump in the road on their way to seizing your kid. But, you know, if they lie in their warrant affidavit, they'll get sued for it. They can't be lying. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Have a great rest of your evening. And um, write your representative. You know, tell them you don't want to go to war with fucking Iran or do anything in the Middle East. We want to pull out of Ukraine. We want to get our money back. We want to start focusing on our own problems and not worry about the rest of the world's problems. We're not, you know, we're not their keeper. So anyway, if you believe that, write your representative, call your representative, get active, tell these fuckers to stop. Anyway, with that, good night. We'll see you guys.